Well, hello there. I have some very interesting thoughts today. It's an absolutely glorious day outside, so I want to show you something first, and then we'll go find a place to sit outside. There's Mr. Sam. So I made this this morning. I'll talk about it in a bit, but I just wanted to show you this. It's a snake. And then it's a mushroom with the spores falling down, the earth, Mother Earth, and then the mycelium, mycelia. So that's that. Okay, I'm going to go find a spot to sit outside. I'll see you in a couple minutes. So I might bounce around a little bit because um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of like drawing things together. Some interesting things came into my being yesterday. Uh, so yesterday I made a video uh, talking about my thoughts on manifestation. And in it, I was saying, you know, if... I don't, I don't force things anymore. I wait for things. I wait for the right time and then things usually fall into my life or even like things like mowing the lawn. I don't, I don't force myself to go do it. And then one day, boom, it just gets done and it's like fun and it flows with ease. So that's sort of the way I try to do a lot of life. So I really like human garage. I've been talking a little bit more about them lately and I got to first know about them, I don't know, a year and a half ago maybe. And it's something that I would have, I wanted to do a deep dive in, but it just never worked. You know, they have a, a routine that you do. It's it's fascial maneuvers. It's, it's um, very simplistic, but yet very, very profound. And the, uh, the results are pretty intense. So, Two weeks ago, I've been having really struggling with my physical health and, you know, September and August, August and September. Geez, let's take a deep breath. August and September were two months of suffering. And then I decided I'm going to try to get myself out of it. And two weeks ago, I started doing Human Garage, and I've been doing it every day for once or twice a day. And it's made such a big difference in my life. Like, my mobility is better. Um, October is the month of calm. I find it's really calming. And okay, so. They do podcasts and they do long form interviews and that sort of thing. And I've never even listened to one of them, you know. Um, and I turned a podcast on last night, just picked one at random. And it, it just, <laughs> it hit me where it counts. And like talking about something dropping into your life at the exact moment you need it. I'm like, wow. Isn't this just something? And it's exactly the type of information that I'm looking for at this point in time in my on my path. And it's it's really far out there. And it's something that I have such keen interest in. So I'm definitely going to be doing a deep dive into that. So they were talking about how they've been doing fascial maneuvers now for I think two years. And they're literally stretching, like they're, they're growing taller. And I thought, okay, so I've recently, you know, started having, coming into wisdom, knowledge about we are soul. I am soul. I came into a human body. My soul is, is so expansive. It doesn't, it literally doesn't have room in this form. So I thought, Okay, I, I th and I've already, I, I've been doing these fascial maneuvers on and off sporadically for the past year and a half. And every time I do them, I feel expansive. I feel calm. I feel like if I want to really sit and meditate, 
if I do these the, the 15 minutes of these of these movements before I'm like able to just go oh, and I can sit and I can meditate or I can drum or I can move things out of my body so I okay and then another thing is uh, one of one of the family and I have I talk about this on a regular basis how we think that there's going to be new, new modalities coming in because we need new ways of being we need new ways to help heal ourselves and i really think that human garage is doing it you know they are one of the new modalities that is coming in and i, I respect them because nothing is behind the paywall their mission statement is they want to help a billion people help heal themselves and it's like Okay, I can totally get behind that, right? I've I've done these movements and I can feel like my it feels like my being is expanding. So I have more room for my soul maybe. But maybe my physical body is actually expanding. And I'm I'm working at integrating soul and body. And I think that fascial maneuvers is the way to go for right now. It's just so cool. It's so cool. So I was, I was doing, I was meditating last night and I kept feeling um, serpent coming out of my head. And it, it's not kundalini energy or anything like that, but I kept feeling serpent coming up. And I, I was like, I'm going to, go out of range of the camera here now but I was like I felt myself getting stretched up okay and then I'd then I'd do something and then I'd the serpent would come up again and I'd feel my entire being just being stretched up and it was like such a interesting experience and I during that meditation I almost felt like I was looking like a like I was looking through the eyes of another creature. I was almost there. I was almost embodying something. I wasn't sure what it was, but I was, I was almost there. It was like so cool. Anyways, this morning I was laying in bed and doing breath work. I like to do it when I'm still in bed and like get up feeling flowy and in a calm, peaceful state. And, and, uh, just had the, the this pail of, stone people that I collected at Clearwater Lake, well, exactly a week ago was, was calling to me. So I got up and started the fire and, you know, did a bunch of those things and then sat down by my altar and I got out my, the pail and I dumped it onto my altar and I was, I just started to play around with it, move them around. And I realized, oh, I made a snake. <laughs> so then I like, I like made it pretty, right? Because I love doing that. And I looked up snake medicine and snake medicine is the, is about transmutation. So transmutation is the action of changing or the state of being changed into another form, which I feel at this point in my journey, this is really what I am working at or what is happening to me, you know, I'm once again feeling things swirling around me. If I would have to de describe August and September, it would kind of be just dead. You know, there was no energy really coming in. There was not a whole lot of energy coming out. There'd be sporadic moments, but overall it was just dead. You know, I was so exhausted. I was so fatigued. I got myself so incredibly stressed and just feeling high strung and working through so many different things that I had to shut, not I had to, but a bunch of, bunch of things shut down just so that I could, um, um, cope, I guess, right? Like it's a coping mechanism to shut down like that. The power of snake medicine is the power of creation for it embodies sexuality, psychic energy, alchemy, and alchemy is a seemingly magical process of transformation or creation. That is really cool. Uh, it's also reproduction and ascension, which is immortality. Snake medicine is the energy of wholeness, 
cosmic consciousness and the ability to experience anything willingly without resistance. I'm like, oh no, or oh yes, please. <laughs> it's like, oh no, I'm, I'm not really good at that. I'm really, I suck at it. But yes, please, please, please. It is knowledge that all things are equal in creation. So that's like just a little blurb about snake medicine that comes from Jamie Sam's. So snake medicine is really, really powerful. It's really potent. It's intense. There's not many people who have snake medicine because you have to get bitten several times and you learn how to alchemize the poison. You learn how to transmute it. So I think the snake medicine that came into my life, it, it has, it's a couple of different things. It's a sign that... Um, human garage is the right thread to pull on right now and and to take a deep dive into and you know it's, i think it's just it's it seems to be a bit of a confirmation of i am soul my soul is too big for my body so doing these movements, if it helps me become more expansive, it is a way to integrate body and soul, which I am wanting to do. And then it's just the power of creation. You know, I am the creator of my life. And then something I heard on what I was listening to yesterday was about perception. So the job, one job of our brain is to prove what we perceive to be true. Our perception can change blood pressure, hormone levels. It causes, can cause us to go into fight or flight. It can calm us down. So perception is really, really important. I woke up yesterday morning and even before I took my first breath, I mean, <laughs> that doesn't make sense because I breathe all through the night. Even, even before I opened up my eyes and really took the first breath of the day, it was like, I am lonely. I am so, so lonely. It's raining outside. It's cold outside. It's cold inside. It's dark, I'm lonely, I have feelings of such intense longing and missing someone. So then my brain, you know, goes click 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 and like whirs through different scenarios and tries to come up with something to prove that yes you are lonely <laughs> and it does a really good job you know it's that way with anything in life which kind of brings me to something i heard today just a little blurb was someone was talking about um being in the victim mode you know our suffering serves no one not even you Okay, my suffering doesn't even serve me, and it certainly doesn't serve you. And brings us back to we are the creators of our lives. Everything comes from within. So if we perceive ourselves to be poor, to have no energy, to not have the resources we need, if we perceive ourselves to be lonely, for one thing, our brain is going to, you know, try its damnedest to come up with proof that yes these things are indeed true and you can either fall into victim victim mode and make it even worse or you can try to work at moving through it there's lots of things in my life that i could get really angry about that i could complain over that I could just say, you know what, this is no freaking fair. Everyone is having a hard time right now. Absolutely everyone. And so many people are really struggling with, you know, not being able to buy 
groceries, rent, mortgage, phone bills, uh, car payments, whatever. Like that, that's everything. The cost of living has risen so exponentially. I've lived that way my entire adult life. You know, I, and I, so I'm just trying to say I speak from experience. I'm not speaking to you as someone who is well off and rich, you know, has everything handed to her. No, 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 no. I've been living below the poverty line for the past 25 years. Okay. So I, I, I come from you. I'm, I'm speaking of my own experience. I was very angry. You know, I was raised solidly middle class, I think. Um, we didn't lead an extravagant life style at all, but it was comfortable. I, I could take piano lessons if I wanted to. I could be in sports if I wanted to. Uh, we bought new clothes. Um, we went on uh, camping trips. You know, we, we went out for meals sometimes. And then I came to be an adult and with my, you know, mental health and the whole system of Western medicine. My life was below the poverty line and I was so angry and I fell so hard into victim how this isn't fair. And I have relatives who are millionaires and there's me who lives in the country i can't have a I can't afford a vehicle i i'm not able to afford this isn't me now but this was then i'm not able to afford buying food that i would want to eat i can't afford to buy clothes i can't even buy myself a, a mattress to sleep on i can't buy toothpaste deodorant or shampoo so i have to figure out what's the cheapest way so no deodorant baking soda for toothpaste baking soda and vinegar for washing your hair and and your hair rinse okay so that that was <laughs> it was harsh and i was angry for years and years and years about it and it's i don't know how i guess it's been like eight years seven eight years it was right after my mom died when I when I first had when I when I had my first teacher who taught me about all sorts of things I'd never heard of and one of them was gratitude. That was one of the first things she taught me was gratitude. And she taught me about being victim. She taught me about languaging. You know, I would I would say something and she'd say, "Okay, let's stop and think about it." And so we'd analyze what I had said and it's like, right, okay, that, that, that's, I, I don't want to be a victim. I recognize that I'm like coming out of it and I still speak a lot of that, but then that was my first experience of, of listening to what I was saying, trying to reframe it. And, oh man, that took so long. <laughs> Not much has changed. Not much has changed. I'm still living below the poverty line. Still can't afford to buy myself a mattress to sleep on. I buy all my clothes from the thrift shop. I buy, I did buy new shoes this summer. Um, I have a vehicle that's really old. And right now I feel like I'm not able to afford to fix it. Uh, I'm alone. Okay. So like, I could get angry and go into victim mode about that too. I'm alone. Okay. I'm alone. I'm, a, I'm not as exhausted now, but I have been very, very tired and just not feeling well. Like literally haven't been able to do anything but sit in the chair until very recently. So I got wood to split. I have wood to cut because I don't have enough wood. I don't have money to go buy wood. You know, so it's like I could go down the whole rabbit hole of just fuck this shit, man. I'm just going to sit in this fucking chair and just swear to everyone who drives past and like, you, you fucking suck driving past with your big truck and your big ass new camper trailer and your big boat. I'm like, fuck you, man. <laughs> okay, but I don't. I don't because I'm, I'm not that woman anymore. I've worked on myself. 
And I was like, yeah, okay, they're having a really good time, hopefully. I mean, I would love to go camping. I'd love to have a new, uh, well, not a new truck, but like a, a more reliable truck. I'd love to have help with the wood. But it's just not my reality right now. My reality is right now, I'm just got to make the best of my circumstances. So I chip away at the wood when I have energy. I go into the forest when I have like really good energy and I cut my 10 pieces of wood and I am grateful. Occasionally I wake up and I just am so incredibly lonely. And I wrote a poem yesterday morning about it, just, just sinking into the loneliness. And then I went throughout my day trying. It was just things were dragging. And I went outside for a walk in the rain. I came back in and I started listening to Human Garage and things just totally shifted. And I was like, right, right. I needed this reminder that, you know, I am soul in a human body, having a human experience. It's the human that's really lonely, you know? And then all emotions, all energy, or all emotions and feelings are energy and they can be transmuted. And I'm working at not getting too caught up in the loneliness because I know <laughs> it can shift so quickly. You know, so I woke up so low and so like depressed. And I go for a walk and boom, I feel totally different. So it's just a good reminder for all of us not to get too caught up in the moment to moment emotions that we may be feeling because they can shift so incredibly easily. So is there anything else to talk about? It all starts from within, okay? See me as an example. I know you haven't, you didn't know me years ago. You haven't seen the amazing transformation, all the shifts. You just got to trust my word. I was a shit show. I was very, very angry. I was total, totally into blame and shame. And if you wait for something to change, you might be waiting forever. And we don't have forever. We have this present moment. And I want to live in the present moment that's often filled with beauty, sunshine. You know, I got my, my kids for company. I'm getting my physical strength back. I don't want to be sitting here and cursing everyone who drives past because there's a lot of people who drive past on this highway. So it starts from within. So if you're interested in exploring that, you know, start to explore it. If you're well on your way, then we're walking, well, we're all walking beside each other, but you'll know a little bit more what I'm talking about. And from those of you, for those of you who are like even further above me along on further along on your journey than I am, you know, you can cheer me on. <laughs> as I keep working on myself. I am off into the forest now to cut my 10 pieces of wood. I actually cut way more than 10 pieces the other day. I was so proud of myself. I counted. I have 70 pieces. Some of them are like nice and big. Some of them are small, but hey, 70 pieces is 70 pieces. One piece at a time, literally. Now I'm splitting some wood today. And I'm going to go to the lake later and uh, have a live there and we'll watch the sunset together. I think that sounds like a pretty good idea. So, I love you. I'm holding you in my heart.
I've got lots and lots of love. So just open up your hands, open up your arms to receive it. Just a reminder that October is a month of creating calm. We can create calm, creating calm, seeking calm. So what are you doing in your day-to-day -day life to bring yourself little moments of calm? Until next time.